A plane crash in the Amazon jungle, four kids go missing, a massive manhunt by the Colombian military, and indigenous volunteers. Here's how this incredible story unfolded. Hi everyone, I'm Jeff, and this is Plain English, where we help you upgrade your English with current events and trending topics. This is lesson number 584, so you can find the full lesson resources at plainenglish.com slash 584. Today's story is one I've wanted to create for weeks, and now I finally can. On May 1st, a plane crashed deep in the Amazon jungle. It was carrying three adults and four children. When rescuers got to the scene of the crash, they found the bodies of three adults. They had been killed in the crash. But the kids were missing, and that meant they were potentially alive, lost and alone deep in the Amazon jungle. It's an incredible story. I'll tell you what happened in just a second. In the second half of the lesson, we'll talk about the English expression, no trace, and we have a quote of the week. Let's get going. The Amazon region of South America is extremely remote. It covers large areas of Brazil, Peru, and Colombia. There are few roads connecting towns and regions in this area. To get from place to place, you can use the river or you can fly. The area is served by small airports and small planes. In fact, many small private planes don't even use airports. They fly from one remote landing strip to another. Early in the morning on May 1st, a family took off from a small airport in southern Colombia along a river that feeds the Amazon. The plane was a single engine Cessna prop plane. This is a very small plane with just a single propeller on the front. At about 7.30 a.m., the pilot radioed to air traffic control that the plane was experiencing engine trouble. The plane then disappeared from radar deep in the Amazon jungle. It was carrying four children and three adults, including the children's mother. It took two weeks for rescuers to even locate the plane after the crash. When they found it, on May 16th, they saw that the plane hit the ground at a steep angle. The front part was more damaged than the rear. They found the bodies of the three adults on board, but there was no trace of the children. This set off a massive manhunt in the most impossible conditions. The region is characterized by thick, dense forest. There are few clearings. It goes without saying there are no main highways and that transportation is very difficult. Wildlife is dangerous, jaguars and poisonous snakes prowl the jungle. In the initial days of the search, rescue teams found clues that the children had survived the crash. They found a bottle, a partially eaten piece of fruit, diapers, a pair of scissors, and small footprints. But they suspected the children were on the move. That made the search all the more difficult. If the children were moving, 
then it was possible that they would move into an area that had already been searched. Rescue teams came up with an idea. They got the children's grandmother to record a message to them, imploring them to stop moving and assuring them that help was on the way. Then they blasted the message from helicopters circling the area. They used powerful speakers that could project sound for about a mile. On May 17th, soon after the search for the kids began, Colombian President Gustavo Petro tweeted news that brought relief to a country captivated by the rescue mission. The children had been found alive, he said. But he spoke too soon. The information was false, and he deleted the tweet. The search continued in the air and on land. On land, Soldiers worked alongside local indigenous volunteers and specially trained dogs to find the missing children. From the air, planes and helicopters dropped boxes of food and set off flares to illuminate the area for teams on the ground at night. The search initially focused on a five kilometer radius from the crash site, but eventually covered an area of over 300 square kilometers. The children, if they were alive, were facing almost impossible odds. The oldest was 13 years old. The youngest, 11 months old, when the plane went down, he would have spent his first birthday with his siblings in the dark forest. The others were nine and four years old. How could they possibly survive? What would they eat and drink? How would they protect themselves from predators, from snakes, insects, jaguars, and more? As the search went into its second month, some began to lose heart. The size of the rescue team diminished, but two factors kept hope alive. The first was that the children were from the jungle. This was their territory. They were members of the Huitoto indigenous community. The oldest, at 13, would have had some knowledge of how to survive in the jungle. And the second reason for hope was that no bodies had been found. Rescuers thought that if the children had died, they would have found their bodies. But the children, he thought, were on the move, making it that much harder to find them. Then, on Friday, June 9th, came the news that everyone had been hoping for. The children were found alive. One of the rescue dogs was the first to find them. They were malnourished, covered in insect bites, and they suffered from dehydration. But other than that, they were healthy. The military tweeted a photo of Colombian soldiers and the four children. The kids were wrapped in thermal blankets and, in one photo, a soldier held a bottle to the youngest child's lips. The story doesn't end there. They had to get the kids out. This was deep in the jungle they couldn't put them in a truck or an ambulance. There wasn't a landing strip or even a clearing large enough to land a helicopter. So a helicopter went to the scene 
and hovered overhead. The kids were secured to lines and lifted into the helicopter. They were flown to a nearby town and, a day later, to a military hospital in Bogota. I was captivated by this story, and I checked my phone every day after I heard about the search, hoping that they'd be found alive. This is just an incredible story of survival, first of all, but second, of a search and rescue mission that was successful against all odds. It reminds me of Lesson 66 when we talked about a boys' soccer team that was trapped in a flooded cave in Thailand and rescuers were able to get them out after 18 days. This incident might also shine an uncomfortable spotlight on air safety in the Amazon. The plane that crashed had also been in a previous crash in 2021. People who fly in the area say that plane crashes are disturbingly common in this remote region. Today's expression is no trace. There's no trace of something means that there is no sign or indication of something. You can use no trace in two situations. One, you can use it when something does not exist. You've searched for it and you have no evidence that it even exists. The second way to use it is when you're searching for something and you think it exists, but you can't see any clues about it. There's no evidence, but you think it exists. And that second way is how I used no trace in today's lesson about the search for the missing kids in the Amazon jungle. A plane went down. It was carrying three adults and four children. After two weeks of searching, rescuers found the wreckage of the plane. In the wreckage, they found bodies of three adults. They were in the front of the plane, the part that hit the ground the hardest. But there was no trace of the kids. That means there was no evidence of them. There were no signs of them. Their bodies were not found. Parts of their bodies were not found. There was no note, no sign, no signal, no recording, no evidence of where they might have been. There was no trace of those kids. And that set off a frantic search, which ended with happy news many weeks later. Imagine you come home one day, and I hope this never happens to you, but imagine you come home and find that your house has been robbed. Someone has stolen valuables from your house. One thing you might look for, or police might look for, is a sign of forced entry. Forced entry means, did someone break a window? Did someone knock in a door? Did someone use physical force to get in? Now, sometimes after a robbery, there is no trace of forced entry. There is no trace of forced entry means 
there is no evidence, no sign that someone used force to get in. So maybe the door was unlocked or the thief had a key or something else. If you go to national parks in the United States, you might see a sign asking you to leave no trace that you were there. That means when you walk out of the park, you should leave no sign that you have even been there. You should leave the park in the same condition or hopefully better than you found it. That means don't leave trash, don't take things home with you, rocks, minerals, plants, flowers, don't trample on the vegetation, don't kill animals, leave no sign, no signal that you were even there. Enjoy it, but when you leave, make sure it's in the same condition that you found it. I don't recommend it, but if you take cocaine or other party drugs when you go out at night, the safest thing is to test the drugs for fentanyl. That is unfortunately something you have to do now. You heard in Lesson 551 that producers of drugs are including cheaper fentanyl in the mix, but if there's too much fentanyl, it can kill you, and it is killing a lot of people. The safest thing to do if you are going to use these drugs is to use a test strip that looks for the presence of of fentanyl. If there's no trace of fentanyl, the strip will come up negative and that's a good sign. Taking the drug isn't exactly healthy, but at least there's no trace of fentanyl in there. I had this quote picked out even before I wrote today's story, even before I had heard about the rescue of the missing kids, but it works. It's a quote posted on the main tennis stadium in Paris. I saw it while I was watching the French Open tennis tournament. The tournament and the complex are named after Roland Garros, a French fighter pilot. And the quote is his, victory belongs to the most tenacious. Tenacious means determined. You don't quit easily. Victory belongs to the most tenacious, says Roland Garros, a quote that can be applied to the kids who survived in the jungle and also to the rescue crews who didn't give up on them. And that's all for today's Plain English. We had such a great time in the ChatGPT challenge that I decided to create a special course about how to use ChatGPT and artificial intelligence in your English learning. And I'm building it out a little bit every week inside of Plain English Plus. So if you were in the challenge, and even if you weren't, if you like ChatGPT, if you like artificial intelligence, we are compiling all the best strategies, tools, prompts, and ideas to help you use this amazing new technology in your English learning. There are already multiple training modules available, and we're making a huge index of prompts in a Google Sheet. So you can just look at the sheet and browse the dozens of ChatGPT prompts specifically designed, specifically tested by me 
to help you achieve your goals in English. Now, if you're a member of Plain English Plus, and a lot of you are, then the good news is you already have this. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to sign up. Just scroll to the bottom of your dashboard and voila, you're in. If you're not a member of Plain English Plus, that's okay too. You can sign up at plainenglish.com slash plus, P-L-U-S, and you'll get access to all the modules we've released and all the future content that we put out while you are a member. And you'll have access to it the minute it's available. So check that out, the new AI for Learning English course inside Plain English Plus. Join today if you're not a member, plainenglish.com slash plus, P-L-U-S.